Hey y'all, this is Kurt, Daddy, the Dungeon Master. Quick intro on this one as it isn't a traditional episode. We recorded this out of town on my phone and went through some housekeeping items as the girls leveled to level three on their characters. So we're just going over those changes. So if you're not interested in hearing that sort of thing, feel free to skip this one and listen in next week for episode seven. Later, guys. Dungeons and Dragons and Daughters. are trying something new out. We were recording this on my phone, doing the video and the audio. <laughs> Not sure the quality or how this is going to turn out, but we're gonna give it a shot and maybe it'll be usable. And if so, then we can do other stuff like this in the future when we're, when we're out of town. Or, oh, what are, what are we calling this kind of episode? This... Dungeons and Dragons and Daughters Out of the Dungeon! We're out of the dungeon. Yes, we are outside of our idea. basement. Outside, we're out of our basement which is the best place to play Dungeons and Dragons, but yeah. any place is a good place yeah. to play Dungeons and Dragons. Let's take a look at your characters. I'm looking for... Who wants to, who, should I go first with Dave? No, or, I wanna go you wanna first. You wanna go first? Okay, let's take a look at I your character be, sheet. I wanna be second. Mimi, the druid, look how many hit points you got now. What? Wait, oh, wait, I did not see. You have 28 hit points now. I have 28. Before, I had 18, so you gave me 10 more. I have yeah, 14. You got the maximum amount that you, you can get. You only gave me four hit with points. With this last. So each time that I level you up, we roll a die to see how much hit additional hit points you get, plus your constitution modifier. So I rolled an 8, plus 2. You got 10 more hit points. So other than that, not a lot of big changes Wait, with the Wait, is there any more spells? You did <gasps> get more spells. All right, so the new spells that you got, oh, we are also now getting into level two spells. We're getting into some pretty decent yeah, spells now. Course. But under level one, you got two new spells. The first one is speak with animals. <gasps> I can talk to my pony. You can, yes, you will be able to talk to Tiny Ginger, is the name of your pony, right? Tiny Ginger, Tiny Ginger, okay. And the next spell that you got is called Entangle. Hey. All right, so Entangle, when you cast that, it ties the creatures up in the affected area. Okay. So they can't move and they can't attack you. So now, your big ones. So this is not Heal Wild Shape. This is actually one that you had before, but we forgot about it, so I wanted to call it out here. Heal Wild Shape, that when you're in the form of a bear or another animal, you can heal yourself for 2d8 hit points. You can actually do your own healing while you're in an animal form. But this, so, but the reason I wanted to call this out is because you had this after going to level two and you, you never used it. So I wanted to make sure that you were aware that you have a healing spell that you can cast on yourself while you're in an animal shape. You can cast it as a level one spell, which would heal you for 1d8, or a level two spell, which, which heals for 2d8. So you can choose which slot that you want to use up for it, and depending on the slot that you use, it'll heal you for more. Okay. Make sense? Mood. Moonbeam. Moonbeam. Uh, let's break out the book for this one. Moonbeam. A silvery beam of pale light sh shines down in a five-foot radius, 40-foot high, cylinder centered on a point within range. Until the spell ends, dim light fills the cylinder. When a creature enters the spell's area for the first time on a turn, or starts its turn there, it is engulfed in ghostly flames that cause searing pain and it must make a constitution saving throw. It takes 2d10 radiant damage on a failed save, or half as much damage on a successful one. What? A shape changer makes its saving throw with disadvantage. If it fails, it also instantly rever reverts to its original form and can't assume a different form until it leaves the spell's light. On each of your turns after you cast the spell, you can use an action to move the beam 60 feet in any direction. So what does that mean? So this is, so when you cast this, a beam of light shoots out of the ground in a cylinder and it covers five feet wide and it goes up uh, 40 feet high and whoever's in it takes damage. 
and you can move it around. So it's got a range of 120 feet. So you finally now have some range spell attacks that you can do. So you can use an action to move the beam 60 feet in any direction. So it does require an action. So you could cast this and cause damage to someone. And then on your next turn, you can move it to another location to do damage on another person or to continue doing damage on, on other creatures. Make sense? Mm-hmm. Okay. And then the last spell that you got is called... Flaming Spear. S Flaming Spear. A five-foot diameter sphere of fire appears in an unoccupied space of your choice within range and lasts for the duration. Any creature that ends its turn within five feet of the sphere must make a dexterity saving throw. The creature takes 2d6 fire damage on a failed save or half as much damage on a successful one. As a bonus action, you can move the sphere up to 30 feet. If you ram the sphere into a creature, that creature must make the saving throw against the sphere's damage, and the sphere stops moving this turn. When you move the sphere, you can direct it over barriers up to 5 feet tall and jump it across pits up to 10 feet wide. The sphere ignites flammable objects not being worn or carried, and it sheds bright light in a 20-foot radius and dim light for an additional 20 feet. At higher levels, when you cast the spell using a spell slot of 3rd level or higher, the damage increases by 1d6 for each slot level above 2nd. So when you cast this, you shoot out this floating fireball, and anyone that gets close to it gets hit with fire damage from it. But the really cool thing about this spell is that it only requires a bonus action to move it around. So you can cast this spell turn into a bear form, attack, and move the sphere to attack the creature at the same time. But would it attack me? No. Okay. No, it doesn't hurt you. But would it attack like Dave and things? Oh, wait a minute. That's a good question. Because it does say any creature that ends its turn within five feet of the sphere must make a dexterity saving throw. So you are right. If you were within five feet of the flaming sphere, it would attack you as well. It hurts anything that's within five feet of it, including other people that are on, in our group. Oh, that's a Bernie, very, that was a very good Bernie question. But could cast that spell so it doesn't hurt me. No, no, that only works with her spells. You're talking about the shape spell skill that she has? Well, no, like the thing that makes a bubble. Yeah, that's the, the, the spell shaping. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She couldn't do that with yours. She could only do that with her own spells. So, but... So what I'm saying, like, could she put that around me? No, unfortunately. So, but th what this would let you do is that you could cast this spell to attack other creatures while you're attacking another one. So it just gives you some more flexibility, and it's something that you can cast at range. So you have another ranged attack spell. We'll have to play around with that one and get used to it. And, yeah, we'll figure it out. So, guys, I'm kind of tired, as you can see. I didn't have a good night's sleep. All right, Birdie, you ready? Get over yeah, here. I've been done it for a while, so. All right, Bird, get Galaxy's character sheet. Yeah, I got it. I got it. Grab it. Is this it? Is this it? Is this it? Yep, it's it. Yep. Okay. All right. Okay. So, you've got 14 hit points. I now. know, I really read. Huh? How rude? You only <laughs> give me four. Why'd you give her a ton? Well, she's a. Well, you're a wizard. Wizards get the least amount of hit points compared to anybody else. Why didn't you tell me that before I was a wizard? Well, they they're, they can also potentially be the most powerful characters. Oh, yeah. So well. I'm, better, I'm better than everybody. Other than that, you just got some new spells. Yeah, I, a ton of new spells. A ton of new spells. And I got a boomerang. <laughs> and I don't know where the boomerang... I think, so we were joking around that she had a boomerang last adventure, but I think it got cut in the editing process. Um, and I told her that she could have a boomerang if she wrote it in on her character sheet. And she did. She wrote really a really large boomerang. Yes. Let's go through your spe new yeah. spells here. Yeah. So okay. I wrote some spells under level one as well as under level two. So that's the big thing, is that you now have level two spells. You didn't have those before. But look at all the new level two spells you got. But that's level four. Well, you've got four, you've got four level one slots. So that means there's four spells that you can cast at level one. And at level two, there's two spells that you can cast at level two. In this section? Yep. Yep, so you can so, cast two of these, any two of these that you want down here. So let's go so let's go through. So these. I can cast four of these at a time. Yep. Two of these at a time. That's right. I, and thanks for updating one of them. So the reason that I wrote burning hands under Again. both of these, yeah. and if you notice magic missile is down here as well. What? 
is but because it's my baby. if you cast Burning Hands or Magic Missile using a level two spell slot, they do more damage. So for example, Burning Hands gets, gets an extra D6 damage, and Magic Missile gets a fourth missile if you cast it at this level. So that's the reason why I put them down here, too. Burning Hands are my baby. But like this guy. you've got this new spell. Well, actually, let's, we'll, we'll get to that in a second. We'll get to that in a second. So all of these spells you had before, Magic Missile, Sleep, Comprehend Languages. So all of these under level one, you Let's had already. Let's comprehend languages. You know that one. Don't you no. remember in the one adventure where you held your hands up to the map and then you could read all the words that were on the map and you oh. could tell us where to Did go? Did you just add that? No, no. That's been on there since like episode four. What? Yeah. All right. So your new spells under level two. Burning Hands, Magic Missile. <laughs> you and got four new spells under level two. Oh, well, Charm, Charm person. person I put down under level two as well what? because... That now, if you cast this as a level two spell, you can charm up to two creatures at a time instead of just one. What is charm? Which charm? Charm person means um, that you kind of you put a spell on a creature and they become your best friend. <laughs> Burning hands, magic missile, charm person. Those are all spells that you had before, but I put them under level two as well because if you cast them as a level two spell, they're more powerful. Got well, it? I really want to ask you, what's web? Can Which, I can I be Spiderman? It's web is kind of so web. This is a new spell that you got. Yeah. This is kind of like Sam's entangle spell. You shoot out a bunch of spider webs oh. that's really sticky that attaches I'm to someone. I'm Spider Man. You're kind of like Spider Man. Yeah. Yes, I'm Spider Man. <laughs> but check this out. Look at that one. What's that one? Invisibility. Birdie, you, you cannot. Can yep, you cannot make yourself <laughs> invisible. How awesome is that? Oh, and I, by the way, I got a new haircut just today. Yep, she did get a beautiful. haircut today. It's beautiful. Okay, but check this one out. Levitate. Uh, do you know what you try to do with burning hands all the time, where you yeah. try to lift people up or lift things up with, yeah. with mage you hands? You mean mage hand. Or mage hand, yeah. That's, well, you always try and do that with mage hand, but mage hand isn't powerful enough to lift people up or carry <gasps> them. Yeah! But levitate can do that. Yeah! So now... I get my dream come true! <laughs> Did you pick it just for me? Yes, I did pick it just Dang. for you. Why so, didn't you do it for level one? Because it's not a level one spell. Oh. So, so yeah. normally when you girls would level up your characters, you would go through the player's handbook and pick out all the spells. But I went ahead and did that for you based on the way that you play and what I thought that you would like. So we can always change these out for different spells yeah. if you want, but I think that you girls will like the decisions and you know, that I made I for it. Never, now I never use magic missile. And I ne have I used sleep? Well, I think I used sleep once. I think so too, and I don't think it worked out. Yeah, so, not that so you got levitate that lets you float yourself up or uh, other people or big objects. And um, I can finally carry Dave. <laughs> you could finally carry Dave, yes. Or all carry right. myself. So I could the be last, floating all the time. I you, could. You would what? I could be floating all the time. Well, it doesn't last. Can forever. I be invisible forever? Um, I'd have to. We'd have to take a look at the duration, but I think it only lasts for a couple of minutes. Dang. So, but you did get another powerful spell for attacking, and that's called Scorching Ray. Here, let me read you the description of Scorching Ray. You ready for this? You create three rays of fire and hurl them at targets within range. You can hurl them at one target or several, so it's kind of like Magic Missile. You get three of them. Oh, You can shoot nice. them all at one creature or three different ones, but this has a range of 120 feet. Ah! You make a ranged spell attack for each ray. On a hit, the target takes 2d6 fire damage. So that means if you shot all three of them at one creature and they all hit, they would take uh, 6d6 fire damage. Oh, will that kill them? Um, that would kill a lot of creatures, yes. And at higher levels, when you cast the spell, using a spell slot of third level or higher, you create one additional ray for each slot level above second. So that's a pretty, that's a new, pretty powerful spell. But I thought that you'd probably be more excited about invisibility and levitate. I thought you'd be really proud about those. And web, because then I get to be Spider-Man. And web, because then you get to be Spider-Man. Yeah! I didn't think of that. That's a good thought. All right. Hey, Sam, you want to come back over here? We'll talk about Dave. So we got, we got Dave's character sheet here. So now Dave... He's level three now, too. He got more hit points. He's got 23 hit points now. But I got 28. Yep, you got more than anybody else. I'm the lowest. 
It's because you're a mage. The mage always has the lowest number of hit points. Okay, yeah. so Dave got some new spells. One of the new spells that Dave got, which you girls should be aware of that's really important, <laughs> is this spell that's called Detect Magic. So that means that when we're going through a dungeon or we're dealing with with special items, Dave can cast this spell to see what if there's any magical attributes that are that is happening or if there's any spells that are being cast on us. So I think that will come in really handy. That's a level one spell that he got, but at level two, he got Zone of Truth. He casts the spell, and the person who he casts the spell on has to tell the truth. That's right, right. Like, the plan they're doing, like, oh, I like, we stole this from us men. That's right, that's or, right. Like, Daddy's not dead. Right, or she should have done it on the dragon. He could have told what he was on doing. On what dragon? On the black dragon. Oh, well, so then he would tell why he was here. Well, we haven't even talked to the black dragon yet. We still got to get to get back to the black dragon. So, But the zone of truth that creates a zone, so anyone that's inside the zone has to tell the truth, including you, if you're inside the zone. So like we had to be like, okay, so... Um, I'm going I to Europe. <laughs> yep, couldn't say that because we're not going to Europe. And then the last spell that he got is called Prayer of Healing. Prayer of Healing is his first area of effect healing. So this means that this is his first spell where he doesn't have to run over and touch you to heal you anymore. He can just cast this on the group and he can heal everybody in the group at the same time. So except he, the villain! Except the villain, yes. But he can heal up to six creatures for 2d8 plus 8 hit points. So it's a really powerful healing spell that he can now cast on all of us all at once. So I think that's going to help out tremendously um, in the adventures ahead. Plus, I like I like Zone of Truth a lot because you always uh, you always feel like uh, that the other characters in the game are lying to us. So Dave could just be like Zone of Truth, and then have to tell the truth. Then how about that? For next time, um, we're gonna next weekend we're gonna be sitting down. And we're gonna be recording episode seven. Aaron Allen is gonna come back um, and play Dave for us next weekend. So we'll get that recorded and get that posted the week after. But and hopefully the audio and the video turns out okay on this one, and we'll get this posted in uh, sometime in the middle of the week. And hopefully, and hopefully, Iron Man comes. Yep. Hope. What? <laughs> Spider-Man, okay. Iron Man, or the whole Okay. Bye.